Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And we are coming to you with another episode sponsored by Gray Fox Games, our continuing sponsors. Uh, yeah. It's been uh, it's been two weeks since we recorded. There were some issues with the last episode. People called us out uh, in Slack, which always happens. That's not new. Uh, but even Twitter was like, is there another episode coming out, guys? And, and that made on? us realize that people actually care if we release episodes or not. <laughs> Turns out, I know. Which is conflicted. I'm conflicted with that information. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow knowing that people want him to release an episode makes Zach want to edit an episode even less. Yes. I'm very familiar. It's like how when people would complain to me about, like, Adrian, what's the game night schedule? And I'd be like, oh, God, now I just don't even want to do it more. Exactly. And then jokes on me, there was a pandemic, and now I don't get to do game night anymore, and I miss it. I miss it so much. It was an all an elaborate prank just for you, Adrian. That sounds about right. The whole world does revolve around me, so it would make sense that the pandemic was entirely to inconvenience me personally. Um, but anyway, uh, let's talk about what we've played, because <gasps> I've played a board game, and I'm excited about it, and I didn't get to talk about it on our non-existent episode that we didn't record last week. Uh, so now I get to talk about it. Um, so I played Feast for Odin, uh, with the Norwegians expansion on Tabletop Simulator with Jeremy from the Slack and one of his local friends, Jimbo. Um, it, uh, it did not take seven hours, six hours, however long it took us to play, um, the uh, Chikarian. I was yeah. like, Feast for Odin has never taken that yeah. long. <laughs> yeah. I, I no. had no idea where you're, I was like, what game? Were, how many were you playing with seven people to get that fucking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it did not take us nearly expansion? as long as Tracarian. Yeah, um, it was just the three of us, so no, no fifth player to add any extra time or anything like that. Uh, and it didn't, unlike Tracarian, where there was like the heavy, really long first round where it was like, oh my god, let me try to remember how to play. I've played Feast for Odin recently enough, you know, in pandemic times even. Um. And on Tabletop Simulator that it was like, all right, just got to get back into it. There was a little bit of that first turn like, oh, God, what strategy do I go for in this game? Um, turns out I ended up uh, not necessarily fully intentionally. I ended up going all animal all the time. Uh, Jeremy definitely went very heavy raiding uh, and settling new islands and Jimbo went very much, uh, I'm going to desperately try to fill up my main board and not have a bunch of negative points. Uh, seemed to be his, his strategy. Um, I'm it, always a fan of the desperation strategy. Yes. Uh, I, I felt like I was doing really good going into the last round. Uh, I had pretty much filled up an entire island, an entire barn. My main board was going to be completely filled. And not with a bunch of money. You know, I actually had pieces to fill it. Uh, So I felt really good about all of that until Jeremy at the start of the last turn went, well, I don't have anywhere places to put all this stuff, so I guess I should maybe settle one more island. And I was like, oh, no. (laughs) And so sure enough, he settled another. Yeah, he settled. It turns out it didn't. It worked very well for him. He had enough stuff that he settled a, a second island on the last turn and filled it with a bunch of shit. And uh, and some of this, some I have no true verification of the final score because very conveniently, as he took his last action of the game, his internet went down and he had to do all the <laughs> scoring on Tabletop Simulator and then just send us the scores. Um, so me and Jimbo hung out awkwardly in Discord. It was like, hey, uh, we don't really know each other, but... We're just going to wait until we hear what the scores are fuck, from fuck Jeremy. Fuck that guy, right? <laughs> um, and so then Jeremy got a hold of me, and he just uh, he, he said that I got 28 points for animals. And I was like, sweet, fucking awesome. And then he just sent the scores of 124, 107, and 82 with no context. Uh, and I was like, okay, who, who, who was who? Uh, and he did, in fact, win uh, with the 124. I had second at 107. And Jimbo, uh, gentleman's third at 82. Uh, so it was a bunch of fun. I'm always super happy to play uh, Feast for Odin. I think the Norwegians is a great expansion. Uh, that new column 
uh, that it adds for the like end action of a round is great. Well, the entire um, new action board. And it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, because it did it rechanged yeah. all the actions and mixed everything up. Yes, um, which for some reason that doesn't I don't notice that as much as like having that new column. Um, but it was more yeah. of a massaging mm-hmm. of the other actions and not really replacing as much. But yeah, like, yeah, kind of separating some a couple together, things, splitting yeah. some, moving yeah. them around a bit. Yeah. No, it's definitely definitely one of the, you know, the top expansions for helping helping increase the, the longevity for a game. Yeah, yeah. And As I stare at uh, Noose, Noose Fjord, right? Un- unplayed, unpunched. <laughs> I, I I want I want to play it. Yeah, I got it. It was on the uh-huh. Asmodee sale, and I was like, Oh yeah, this game is really expensive, and that's why I didn't want to buy it. But it's on the holiday sale. I think I got it for like thirty six bucks. That nice. seems right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, and then the last thing for, for Feast for Odin, it's also great on Tabletop Simulator. That lock function is amazing for being able to be like, you know, placing your polyominoes and then not jostling them all around. Yeah. Uh, makes uh, me I'm wish sure. I could do that in real life. Like, I mean, you could once. And yeah. Then... Yeah. I... <laughs> Jeff, uh, I'd like to play your Feast for Odin, please. Don't <laughs> mind the super glue sitting on the table. Yes. <laughs> or just, Or just a shitload of staples. Oh yeah, get, get the staple gun out. Like, chunk, yep. chunk. You need a pretty heavy duty staple gun to get through all that cardboard. But yeah, that's fine. You could do it. Um, so yeah, so that's what I played. Um, I haven't played anything else uh, because I've been doing snowboarding stuff that I'll talk about in banter. Uh, but we're not going snowboarding this upcoming week because there's no so, snow. Well, <laughs> well, where we go, there is. Uh, but no, we just have both of. She works Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, and I might have to work Friday, and then I have a haircut Thursday that I don't actually really need, but, um... What's a haircut? I know, right? (laughs) Oh, I need a haircut. Uh, So, yeah, so we'll, uh, so we're not going up this week, so I might try to organize another, like, Wednesday game with Jeremy and his friends, or, you know, anybody else who's around and available to do a Wednesday day game, um... I'm not going to say that I might try and stream it, even though that's always in the back of my head. But every time I say that, it definitely doesn't happen. So it probably <laughs> won't. But we'll see. The more uh, you say it, the time. less you want to do it. Yep. Exactly. So um, that's what that's I've our... played. Uh, Zach, do, have you have you played anything in the last yes. two weeks? Yes. Like almost every time in the past, I don't know, six months at least. Um, I've anytime I've played a game, it's also been the ones that Jeff has played. I've played more. <laughs> no, I know. No, I didn't say that ours always match up, but more often than not, if anything I that I game, have played, you have also you, played. Yes, no, yeah. that's not true. Anything you no, have any, played, I have played. Yes, that is what I'm trying to say. Because then yes. I play more board games that you have yes. not played. We got there. Yes, we did as a team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, so there so, is an I and our played. team, however. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so on Sunday, we went over to Paul's place to, uh, obsessively play Kingdom Death, but then we decided not to. Uh, so we ended up playing, uh, Forgotten Waters again. Our 2020 game of the year. Yep. (laughs) Uh, it was the fourth (laughs) scenario. Um, something of the drowned. Uh, Ghosts of the drowned? Spirits of the drowned? Uh, spoils of the damned. We weren't even, (laughs) all right. Not even close. <laughs> uh, so, spoils of the damned. Uh, this one, we were hunting. Uh, we were looking for uh, a ghost island to find. Was Captain, it Captain Lees. Lees, yeah. Um, the the our captain, like her people, were taken by him, and so we were trying to get them back and and other things. Um. I was the doomed pirate, and this was probably my least favorite of the flavor ones that I've had so far, uh, because mainly just because it wasn't funny at all. It was, it was, it was just <laughs> yeah. trying. To, I mean, it, it was trying to be sort of serious in a way of just like I was a doomed pirate. I saw my own death, and I was trying to avoid it. I wasn't okay. a. I wasn't a totally not a skeleton. Not or totally I, not a magically animated skeleton. Yep. Or I definitely wasn't uh, like Paul. Paul was a, a culinary pirate that was just trying to kill every single fucking person he could. Through cooking. <laughs> through cooking. Through, through cooking. <laughs> yeah. He, he laced a black powder into the frosting of a cake. So when they lit the candles, they would explode. 
but all it did was burn people's eyebrows off. <laughs> but and, and honestly, out of the four scenarios that we've done so far, I don't I can't say for certain it was my least favorite, but it was definitely in the bottom two. It felt like uh, we missed some content. Yeah, yeah it definitely we, felt like we were we missing finished stuff it so and fast. I, yeah, we finished it so fast, and I think part that was partially due to us fucking up last time and not having the one uh token out because of the glitch in the app um that we kept looking around for everything and then we just ended up running out of time and so this one we were just like well we know what we need to, we know what we need to do let's just go 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 uh and we ended up only one person got their legendary ending uh, everybody else got their good ending but even that some people were like on the last turn or next to last turn is when they got their good ending so it definitely felt like the first half of the game like there was an island that we could have gone to that we ended up not going to because it was like oh that's like all the way on the other side of the ocean um and it it basically would have let us get uh write a keyword on our journal that at least half a dozen times it was like hey do you have guide written sure and don't we're just like no no we don't and it's just like all right we'll enjoy this bad <laughs> stuff and we're like God yep damn it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it definitely felt like we were missing some stuff. We, like we didn't figure out what was up with the dolphins. Yeah, it's twice now, like twice, uh, we were able to write down uh, that we were friends of the dolphins, but nothing came out of it. Um, and it 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 lacked a lot of that, um, the, like reoccurring characters that we've seen, where we like, would keep running into like a ship, and then it would exactly. be crewed by the sister of someone we just killed and then we would kill them and then their sister would show up and we'd kill them yeah uh no the, the funniest uh, the funniest thing to come out of the whole thing was just one of the uh the ship battles we had where you can like taunt the other crew oh yes yes <laughs> it was absolutely <laughs> hilarious um it was like a taunt and then they just kept describing how awful the ta- well, like how good the taunt was so much so that it was banned nine months later because it shouldn't be u- be heard by like, human ears. Yeah, humans <laughs> shouldn't be able to uh, to possess such power. Yes, <laughs> it basically became a, a a pirate war crime. Yeah, the taunt was so good. Yep, uh, but it let us set uh, our die rolls to twelve for the remainder of that round. <laughs> it was it was real nice. Yeah, um, another. I think we've mentioned that- this before, but. Uh-huh. Um, the the voice acting on it is very good, and it's this it's uh the guy that does Piccolo in Dragon Ball Z, the U.S. voice actor. Um, and every time he talks, he just sounds like fucking Piccolo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one one more humor thing that I saw that I liked was that Christopher uh, Sabat. Yes, Christopher Sabat. Yeah. Uh, was I I rolled really poorly at a um at an inn or at a tavern uh the drowned duck i think it was called or drunken duck one of the two could be uh, but it was basically i i challenged this very small guy to a drinking contest and then i you know i walk in there like yeah this is gonna be fucking great i'm twice the size of him and then it turned out it was a, a, a like a wine tasting contest <laughs> uh, <laughs> And, you know, he's just like, oh, I taste oak and I taste smoke. It, oh, is it's probably from this year. 1639. And this... Yeah. Yeah. And then my guy's like, mm, I taste grapes, maybe. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I think they probably used a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> um, I did not win that one, unsurprisingly. No. Uh, no. It's still still the, the greatest failure was the one where we... Yes. Uh, you uncovered and, you uncovered yeah. the secret tavern the, working for the royals but you just accidentally yes. blew up the place and blamed it on them and everyone believed you <laughs> yep wink wink yep <laughs> uh now it's still a great game we have one uh we have one scenario left and we have two of the um stories like the pirate uh logs to go through uh, that are new, and then otherwise we'll have to go back to one of the ones that we've already done. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, it's a shame when you have, like, this story content that obviously it ends at some point. Um, so I'm curious to see if they're going to... Because I feel like this was a popular game when it came out, um, that I hope that they release more for it. Yeah. It seems like it would be fairly easy, in my opinion, which is probably incorrect, to make more content for this game. 
<laughs> um, because it's all digital, so it's just putting up scenarios like Mansions of Madness. Yes. Throw, it, throw another scenario in the app. Mm-hmm. You already have the materials. It's just how yeah. you put the materials out. And you could do like a print, like you could sell PDFs of like new pirates. Yeah. Um, and, uh... But like for them to do the quality of what they had before would be harder because you would have to have like a fully voice recorded scenario. I mean, yeah, but I, I've got to assume with a veteran voice actor like that, he's got his own like recording booth in his house or something. Yeah, Almost certainly. Yeah, it's probably just uh, expensive. So, yes. Oh yeah. No. No. Definitely. Um, was this post freedom for Plaid Hat? Uh, it was before. Oh, oh, I no, I think it was before. Okay. Was it? Yeah. I don't remember when that happened. I mean, I feel like this was released early in 2020. Yeah, the review for it from Tom Vassell was 10 months ago. And his are so usually that been pretty a- early. Yeah, so that would have been April or May. Yeah. And they announced they were leaving on the 28th of February. Really? Oh, wow. Then yes. Yeah, I guess this was, was the after. first thing after then. Huh. Okay. But it was in development before. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it seems like they left with the rights to the game. Oh yeah, yeah, that. no, no, it's still, it's still theirs. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think they. I, I'm trying to remember what they lost. Did they lose much from leaving? I think uh, so. The, Meist and Mystics. Uh, Dead Meist of Winter and, and Raxon. Uh, Dead of yes. Winter and Raxon stayed with Fantasy Flight. Ah, yes. well, that's fine. Who cares about <laughs> yeah. those games? Uh, so this actually, so looking here, so I this was saved in my browser cache. So yeah, the. The 28th of February was the, like, Plaid Hat is leaving Asmo Day. Uh, on the 27th of February was introducing Forgotten Waters on PlaidHatGames.com. So, <laughs> like, they basically were announced at the exact same time. Gotcha. But technically before is what I heard. One day before? Is that what yes. you said? Yeah. Well, so. <laughs> let me, well, let me see here. Plaid Hat Games... Uh, Yep. So it was uh plathatgames.com slash news slash ten forty five is Forgotten Waters. Uh ten forty seven is Plat Hat Games is is going its own way. And it was one day apart. I wasn't sure if the BGG post was just made like a day or two later after the other news had broke, but no, it was not. Gotcha. So And then the the game actually came out in uh Ju- June. So Yay, something like that. Expected release date was April 10th, but I don't think they made that. Shocking! It's like turns out things happened between February 27th (laughs) and April 10th. Who's who's to say? There's no Uh, way to tell. All I know is the more you guys talk about this, the more I really want to actually get to play it with you guys. It It sounds like a bunch of fun. It is. Yeah, we. It is a good crossroads game, is what it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, whenever we can finally fucking play together, uh, I'll I'll bring it. Not that it's. I mean, there is some good remote ways to play it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. But. You could definitely play it remote, but I feel like it's still better yes. with Yeah. Almost certainly. Um so yeah. Uh Zach, did you have anything else besides um Yes. So, uh that finished at around four and so we had an hour or so to kill and so we decided to play Jeff grabbed uh Men at Work. Um, okay. you know, which is, you know, a good a real good dexterity game, five people Worked great. Uh, two people, it was their newest, or it was their first time playing. And this, you know, construction dexterity game is uh, is a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, we definitely had a lot of, um, I want to say Eric was the first person out. He, and he was a new person, and he kept, like, knocking a brick off. Like or... one, one little thing. <laughs> yes. So Thursby was cleaning up bricks. Um or he, he was multiple instances of cleaning up a single brick, I should say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I was the second person out, uh, and mine were like fairly like not ac- you know accidentally knocking a couple people off, uh, and then one of them I was trying to place a girder somewhere, and then my hand just like for whatever fucking reason decided to just wipe a, a, a nearby girder off the table, and I was just like, <laughs> why the f- why the fuck did that happen? Ugh. But um. Paul, he had, um, we had like two major, um, cleanups that we had to do in that from, you know, major accidents. And both of them were caused by Paul. Yes. Um, the second one was 
definitely one of the better ones I've seen because he he ended up dropping uh, a worker or he like accidentally let go of a worker and it like slid down a girder. Yeah. Hit like hit, fucking um, Fred Flintstone. Like Leave Fred Flintstone <laughs> hit uh hit the crane and then fell on its back and then slid down another girder and then hit the ground and then it was fine was for like, about little to no destruction. Little no destruction for about one to two seconds, just everyone just to be like, "Oh wow, that was cool!" And then it just all fucking collapsed. Well, he on dropped itself. the beam that was in his fingers. Oh, and gotcha. when he dropped the little beam, that's what caused a massive collapse <laughs> uh, that destroyed pretty much the whole thing. Yeah, and it knocked Thursby out because he couldn't clean it up, mm-hmm. and then it it made you lose your turn because you couldn't clean it up, and then he. Uh, was able to like that. He was able to get... clean it up and then super get the... easily get the highest and then just win. Yes, yeah, yeah. But still, a good game. Yeah. Still a fun dexterity game. They all they all liked it. I'm assuming. Um. So, but that's uh, that is what I have played. Right on, Jeff. What else have you played beyond that? Uh. So I actually picked up Root on Steam over the the winter sale. I never really got around to oh. playing it. I um, almost picked it up and I didn't. And uh, fiddled around with that, uh, played kind of like an, uh, a medium AI game solo. Um, the AI knows what it's doing, but I fucking won <laughs> off of uh, a dominance victory, no less. Holy shit. Because I had like a, a mouse, or the orange mouse clearing dominance victory. And I was like, all right, the only person that can even attack me, because I had mouse on where because I was cats I had it where my castle was I had another location that had like five cats on it and then the other one had four the only one that could even threaten me was the eerie and they didn't have a battle in mouse or a wild and I was like so they can't even fucking attack me I'm just gonna play this it's gonna go around everyone was able to move in there but I had dominance by one um and it was like and you win and I was like cool Fuck it. Fuck everything. Never playing this again. Uh, <laughs> I have I have destroyed the AI once, and I'm calling that a victory, and taking that championship belt home with me to never be seen again. <laughs> uh, but it's very, very, very well done uh, for the for the app. Uh, the tabletop simulator one does have a little bit of an edge, just because it uses actual like components from the game, <laughs> where this is more like. Your cats are like 3D renders of like a cat that will march around on the board. Uh, It's definitely much, I don't know, it's more of a like video game version, which makes sense because it's an actual PC version of it. But Mm -hmm. um, it was good. It's very good. I I look forward to when they get some more of the advanced content stuff in there. But uh, I I would like to play Root more because Root is very good. Uh yeah, Root is fantastic. Yeah. Um I have not played uh on Steam, but doing the quick glance at the screenshots on the page for it, it looks like it is just slightly more polished version of what you get on the app, which I do play a decent amount of. Um and mm-hmm. same thing, you have like the little like 3D ish cats that like go, you know, march along. Yeah. And then there's like the little like Battle cartoon, sequence. yeah, the little cartoon dust ball of a fight, yeah. and then the bodies like pop out of it. Um, yeah, I really like it. Um, ooh, they had a patch yes uh, on the twenty seventh for the winter map. Ooh, uh, know. yeah, because that's the one that you um, can randomize your. I think so. Yeah, stuff. Although I think on the app you can choose to randomize even the base clearings. I think. Oh, um, and I guess the winter's just like different routes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to when they uh, start adding in some of the expansion content because yep. that's really where it's going to be at for I, me. I just want to um, get good at the strategy for the cats because for like the most basic faction, I feel they're like not. I haven't I haven't gotten the like strategy down at all yet. Like, how do you win as the cats? Difficulty. <laughs> 
Um, they're inter- it's it's in- one of the things I really think they've done a great job with with Root uh, is having all of the different factions legitimately feel like you play different games. Oh yeah, without having it be quite like say a um, vast the Crystal Caverns level of teaching a different game to each player. Like you're all playing the same game, but you're playing it so differently that like the feeling of it comes across very differently. Like the cats, you very much feel the whole game like you're fighting a losing battle. You start spread out really well and you can get kind of built up, but then you're just constantly facing little attacks and you got to like slowly let, you know, figure out where to let let it bend, but don't break while trying to push in other directions. You know, whereas like the Irie, you start with just one clearing. And if you're going to win as the Irie, it's like a slow, steady march towards victory where occasionally you're probably going to turmoil and drop way back and then have to kind of start that march again. And it's just such an interesting dynamic of how different each faction plays. Um, Really, really like Root. I'm right there with you, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, Anything else? Uh, And then I I fooled around a little bit with the Dune Imperium solo mode. Um, I didn't get very far in it, but... uh... I want to play more Dune, so and Direwolf has like a a neat. Uh, there there is a uh, solo and like two player like AI deck that comes with it, an Automa, okay. if you will. Yeah. Um, but they also have a digital implementation of that where it will deal and stuff all that like via the their app. Uh, so I just kind of fooled around with that for a little bit and started learning how to play Dune solo because I've heard it has a pretty decent solo mode. And I want to play more Dune, because I like Dune. So this will help me play more Dune. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, and there's a good tabletop simulator version of it as well, which is what I was using, because fuck actually getting out a physical board game these days. Yep. All right. Yeah. Which reminds me, I have to play Nemo's War, which I now own. Uh, and heard of that is a very good solo game as well. Oh, I'm kind of bummed I missed out on this super, like... I'm sure you can still pay them money. <laughs> I probably, but also it's easier for me to just keep saying, oh, I missed it too bad, and then not actually spend that money. Yes, so. it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but I think that wraps up what we've been playing. Yes. Cool. So we can move on into some banter. Um, I'll go ahead and get snowboarding stuff out of the way early. Uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, for me to be snowboarding. Um, Damn you, Jeff. <laughs> he just said, just sent me the late backer pledge to... Uh, and it's no Nemo's more expensive. War. It is $89 plus shipping. Exact same thing as the Kickstarter. Yep. And um, you get the expansion. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, snowboarding has still been a lot of fun. Megan and I have been going up uh, pretty much every Thursday, Friday since New Year's. Um, we had one week where we took off because we went and did our airy, as I talked about, uh, learning avalanche uh, safety stuff. Uh, so we did actually a three-day trip this past weekend. Uh, so we went up Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I actually took a day off work uh, because we had our backcountry three lessons, which could only be done on Saturdays. Um, the Thursday we went up, uh, we got a fairly late start leaving Denver. Because Megan was like, I don't know, super um, demotivated on Wednesday to do anything. Uh, She had kind of a rough day Tuesday at work. So we did no packing, no planning, no prep, no nothing on Wednesday. Woke up at like 5 a.m. on Thursday and had to like get all of our gear together, load the car, make breakfast, finally get on the road, and then drive like two and a half hours uh, up the mountain to to Bluebird. so we rode Thursday. Riding was fine. Um, this was my fir- that was my first day. I got new skins because I bought a split board. I caved and spent way too much money uh, and bought a split board and bindings for it. But then I couldn't find skins. Um, so I rented skins two weeks ago, and then this Thursday was my first day with my own skins. And turns out, brand new skins. So that for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, skins can go on a split board or skis, uh, and it's basically uh, they're usually made of like. Uh, some mixture of mohair and nylon. Uh, and so they're slick kind of in one direction and then they grip in the other direction. And so you put them on your skis or your split board when it's in the split configuration. And so it allows you to glide. It slides really nicely 
uh, along the snow, and then as you step and put weight on it, it locks into place. So you can skin uphill on, like, snow. Um, and then your board or skis, in theory, are big enough uh, that they hold you up similar to snowshoes. So um, they have on the opposite side of that, like, mohair nylon mixture, they've got, like, a sticky uh, substance. Uh, it's not really, like, a glue uh, because it doesn't come off onto whatever you're putting it on, but it helps it stick to your skin so, like, your ski doesn't just slide off of the skins. Uh, they also stick to that. Um, and then as you take them off, when you're getting ready to snowboard, you got to put them somewhere. So you fold them up, and there's, like, different thoughts and processes of how to fold them. Uh, but you fold them up, and usually you end up putting sticky side to sticky side so that it doesn't get a bunch of shit on it and ruin the sticky. Problem is, is when you get down to the bottom again and you want to put them back on your gear to go back up... You have to pull that sticky apart. And turns out with brand new skins, holy shit, is that hard. It was exhausting. It was easily the hardest thing I did on Thursday and Friday was pulling my fucking skins apart. It was starting to get very frustrating. Uh, luckily, by the end of the day Friday, uh, right as I was getting super fatigued, they were also starting to finally get enough like use in them that they weren't concrete stuck together. They were only like, I don't know. Still very stuck, but I could I would I could get it apart again. And then Saturday that it was pretty much fine. Um, but we had uh had a good day, an okay day Thursday. Um, we were still a little demotivated from our previous Wednesday, uh, and our late start. Uh, but then Friday was a good day. Um, just kind of rode on our own. Um, talked to a few random people here and there. Uh, while we were transitioning and stuff, who were up there on their own you know, trying to hopefully make some backcountry friends. Uh, and then Saturday, we woke up uh, camping, and it was snowing. And we'd expected a little bit of snow, but it was snowing kind of a lot of snow. And then it proceeded to not stop snowing all fucking day Saturday. And uh, the course that we were signed up to do, the backcountry three, it ended up being the instructor, Megan, me, and then one other stranger. Um, and the, the plan for their backcountry one, two, three is they're supposed to lead up to the airy course that we had already taken. And so we talked about that, like in our little meet and greet at the beginning, we were like, yeah, we already took the airy. We kind of did things out of order. And the instructor was like, okay, well, I'm going to do things a little different then since you've already taken the area and we're going to take a slightly different approach to this. And, uh, so he did some things different and catered the lesson to us a little bit more. Screw the other guy who hadn't taken an airy. Um, but uh, what that ultimately led up to was the last lesson thing for the day was teaching us how to plan our own skin tracks up untouched snow, uh, especially because it had been snowing all day, uh, which turns out is exhausting. Um, breaking your own trail is tiring. Um, but we were able to get up into a part of the mountain that Megan and I had not been to yet and had easily the best line of the season, super deep, super fluffy snow, uh, and was able to, like, just cruise, fairly low angle train, so we weren't like flying. Uh, and it was through this big, beautiful Aspen Glade and just awesome. Super, super great. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, really, really good week of snowboarding for me, which was nice. Uh, as Jeff kind of alluded to earlier, like the snow has been absolute garbage overall. Um, yeah, like the whole resort isn't even open. Uh, very little of it is actually open right now. And like, you know, everywhere I've been, like, all the resorts and things, people are just like, oh, my God, a basin is a giant sheet of ice. This sucks. You know, we're like, you know, this backcountry area that's normally really popular, everybody's like, there's not enough snow to cover the rocks. So, like, you know, I keep seeing pictures of people who are just trashing their gear, running over rocks and tree stumps and things that aren't buried enough yet. And it's it's rough. It's rough. But I'm happy to be snowboarding. I'm happy to be getting out. Uh, getting fresh air, getting some exercise uh, after a year spent hiding in my basement. So, uh, yeah. Um, what else? Oh, we did a beacon search. That was the other thing. Saturday after we got back down to the base area, we did like, uh, they do like beacon search competitions where you, you search for a buried beacon uh, and whoever has the best times win prizes. Um, they had, they ended up having eight people compete. Uh, Megan and I were the first two to go. Uh, Megan beat me by, like, two seconds, which she su super rubbed in. And, like, the uh, woman who was running it 
like as Megan beat me, she's out in the snow, and the lady turns to me and she goes, "Don't be mad, your girlfriend beat you." And I was, I was like, "Oh, if I got mad every time she beat me, I would just be mad all the time." <laughs> I was like, I, "I, I, I got over that a long time ago." <laughs> um, and then it turns out that of the eight people, uh, I ended up being the worst at the beacon search. Uh, mine was the <laughs> slowest time. And so Megan for, was Megan's the second slowest time then? She was the second okay. slowest time. <laughs> um and but but so there were eight people who competed. The grand prize was a brand new like snowboarding backpack thing that holds all your like your avalanche gear and all that stuff. Um that was the first prize. And then they had six uh avalanche shovels as prizes. And they did not have an eighth prize. <laughs> so everyone but uh, me got a prize. Yay! <laughs> well, let's just hope you get buried and not Megan. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I already own a shovel. Like, you have to have shovel beacon probes yes. to even go on the mountain. But now we have a third shovel. So so um, if the shovel gets caught in avalanche, you can get it out with your other shovel. Correct. Correct. Uh, realistically, yeah. we're going to throw one of them in the car as, like, the car shovel. Uh, in case we don't have our gear with us and we end up in a snowy ditch somewhere. Uh, we'll have a nice, collapsible, efficient shovel. Um, but, yeah. So, Megan has now, on two different beacon hunts, has won a bottle of champagne on New Year's Eve and then won a shovel <laughs> in this beacon search. And I have still won fuck all. Uh, they felt bad for me, so they gave me a ski strap. Uh, which is like a little $2 piece of nylon. Or like... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Question. like rubbery did, did, thing. Did they see it like laying on the ground somewhere and then they're like, Here. No, no, they, they actually had them. <laughs> okay. They actually had them. And if I'd if I'd been greedy enough to ask, I probably could have had like two ski straps. So um, what am I gonna do with one ski strap? I mean, yeah. A frame carry on your snowboard only uses one strap, but um so I have a use for the one. I'm I'm still happy to have it, but it was like it was definitely the consolation prize. Especially because the girl who's giving the prizes, she gave the first place guy like his backpack. And then she gave everybody except one of the times who was like randomly in the middle, she gave them all shovels. So she got down to like so she gave Megan a shovel and then she still had one shovel. And then she looks right at me and she goes, I am so sorry. This shovel is going to the most entertaining which was this person who went full yard sale and like fell in the snow and everybody laughed really hard who also had a better time than Megan. So like if she had went by pure time, I wouldn't have gotten it anyway, but it was still just like the way she did it where she looked right at me. And she was like, I'm so sorry in case you felt like I was counting down to you, but no, this is going to this other person. It's like rude. You did that on purpose. Didn't you? <laughs> so even in snowboarding, people like to kick me when I'm down. Yay. Um, and I sliced my pinky open pretty good and blood all over my skin. So that was another thing that happened. Great. Um, That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So all in all, it was a great weekend and I had a bunch of fun. <laughs> there you go. So, so yeah. Uh, that's a bit about all I've been up to, though. Um, weather in Denver hasn't been anything special. There was uh, snow. There was, we did get snow in the last two weeks. That's right, because it's been, it's been a little while. We got, a, we got a nice snowfall here in town, too. And now it's all gone um, because it, it was is all... 55 degrees yesterday and today. And it's going to be in the 60s yep. the next two days. Sounds about right. Yep. Classic Denver move right there. Um, Sports-wise, it's my nightmare uh, for the Super Bowl this upcoming weekend. Uh, on the one hand, it's the Chiefs playing. On the other hand, it's Tom Brady playing. And Yeah, now since he moved, that can happen. Because it couldn't it, happen before, I, right? No, it couldn't happen. Like, yeah. Usually that was the consolation. Is it was one or the other. Now it's both. And it's just, this is really is the worst year. It is just fucking awful. Um, who, the who do you end up going with then? Obviously, well, I know if if you could, they could somehow draw them both lose, I know that's what you'd want. But yes. outside of that, I I was like even joking. I think on the sports channel about like how many overtimes would it have to go to of zero zero score before they finally just called it a draw? You know, like would they play like seven days of Super Bowl if nobody was scoring? <laughs> like like, like how long does it go? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and like the Broncos subreddit has been sharing stuff like the Bane scene where he like t blows up the stadium. They're like, "This is my dream for the Super Bowl." Mm, terrorism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh... <laughs> Only if it's Bane. Um, personally, for me, um, 
as much as it pains me to actually say it, especially in a recorded format where people can use it against me in the future, I'm rooting for the Chiefs. I really, really don't like Tom Brady. Um, and I really like, as much as I hate the Chiefs, I do like their quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. He's just too damn good and too damn likable. And it's not fair that the fucking Chiefs got him. That's bullshit. Uh, but I'm not going to hate him for that. It's not his fault. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, I lived in Kansas for a long time. I have a bunch of friends who are Chiefs fans. I don't know a single person who's a Tampa Bay fan. And the only Patriots fans I know all hate Tom Brady now, too. So it's like I don't have anybody to pe- uh, like appease by rooting for Tom Brady or the fucking Buccaneers. So, no, I'm rooting for the Chiefs. Um, and that's just, it is what it is. I'm, I'm going to be at work, so I'm probably not even going to watch it. Um, I'm just going but... to Diebolt for their Nashville hot chicken, which just so happens to also be their Super Bowl watching event. But I will eat the Nashville hot chicken uh, and then go home. That sounds Wait, real what good. Ti- what time, yeah, is, what that? time is that? Noon? Damn it. Till Ooh. when they run out of chicken. Hmm. Uh, which almost certainly be Sunday. before like seven. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Uh, that sounds good. Yeah. I have to join you on that. Or, All right. One of you guys should bring me Nashville hot chicken to work after you go to default. Uh, I refuse. Nope. Yeah. <sighs> nope. Rude. I mean, if you want, we, you know what? I can, I can offer that we could do a podcast vote on whether that happens, <laughs> but I don't like your chances. It's not going to go my way. No, yeah. My chances on a podcast <laughs> vote. It's very rare that I win podcast votes. Yes. Mm hmm. Savor those victories. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, other banter things from you guys. I feel like I've bogarted it. Uh, just uh, I've got a couple things. One, I, I now can say that I have had to violently throw up before. Uh, I had that happen Wait, the first what? time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, basically, I I had a uh, um uh, a headache turning into a migraine on Friday, and so I went to take some aspirin and i was taking three and so like the first two went down fine the third one it felt like it got caught in my throat uh but i wasn't sure until i went until i uh went to lay down to just sleep some and then i had to cough and then i just had to go to the bathroom and it was uh, like all i can say like i i i it is the first time i can definitively say oh that was violent how bad it was <laughs> I'm I'm picturing right now the scene from Team America World Police that <laughs> the public oh, yeah. is violently throwing up that in was, the alley. It was lengthy. Yeah, it was. It <laughs> wasn't. It, yeah, no, it was definitely. It was, but it was violent. Like, yes, there was, it was. There yeah, was, it was. It was forceful. Yeah, it was forceful. Just, yeah, unwanted. Um, oh, one hundred percent unwanted. And so that's what, after I after I was finally done with that, I was just like, well, this. This seals the fact that I'm just going to lay in bed for a long time because I was already wanting to do that because I was headed ahead. And then I was just like, I'm just done with today for right now. <laughs> I just can't even. Like, yeah, I just can't even. Um, and so, oh my God. yeah. Uh, but I've, you know, I've uh, continued to been playing uh, VR. Uh, there's a game that was on Steam for a while called Gorn that the Quest, yeah. finally, re- the Quest finally released their version of it. And it's basically an arena fighter where you're fighting these big, you know, big chonky beef dudes. Um, <laughs> I mean, and you like take big chunks out of them when you hit them and stuff. Yeah. So you, you have weapons that you can hit them with and you can like slice their like you can dismember them. You can. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is that if you knock one of them out, you can pick him up and then grab his head and then you can just pull. And then at one point, his head will then come off. Um and then, and you can also like there are swords that you can just like stab them and then you'll you get pull out Wolverine their heart. claws. Yeah, you get Wolverine claws. Yes, um, and it was it's a lot of fun. Um, it's definitely like I've beaten the campaign, uh, and now there's like from, an endless uh, mode. It's from the the makers of Bro Force. That Bro seems Force. right. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Bro Force <laughs> and Bro, Bro Force is jousting. jousting. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have nothing to say about that. Um, I haven't played it, but I've I've watched it, and it's yeah, it's exactly it's it's not what you think, but it also is exactly oh, what you it's, think. Yeah, it's precious. Yeah, uh, but that one's been a lot of fun. But I've been, I was I played a couple more uh, with my friend. They were like they're both like ten bucks, so we just 
like on Friday or no, Saturday night. And you're like, hey, let's just buy these and try them out. First one was uh, it's like Void Racers. Uh, and it's like, uh, think Mario Kart, like with Tron in a way. Um, I mean, it's, it's you're on a, you're on a track, but you're on bikes instead of like uh, carts. And it is it took a little while to get used to like my head just like going that quick uh, of like trying to to how quickly you were going in the game and like actually have it mess with me well if that makes sense um but it was it was fun uh they had a, some pretty cool courses but the the one game i really liked that me and my friend played afterwards was called blast on and it's a two person dueling game uh except the guns that you're shooting um basically think of them as like nerf guns uh, and the bullets go out like it takes the other person's about like, say, 15, 20 feet away from you. And it takes about anywhere from three to five seconds for that the bullets to come hit you. So they're slow, so you can easily dodge them. But you can just start like peppering the entire area of the bullets. So it becomes this game of like you're trying to knock out the other person, but you're also trying to dodge around to not get hit by their uh, by their guns, and there's a bunch of different styles of guns. Um, there's like you know, there's shotguns. There's this one that shoots this really sm- this really slow ball, but it is like a foot and a half like sphere that's just coming towards you, <laughs> and so it like takes up a big chunk of space that you have to dodge around, and it's and it's easy enough to, or it can be easy enough to like force people to go in a certain spot that makes them easier to hit with the other guns. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun. That's definitely been one of my favorite multiplayer games I've played so far. The only thing that's really annoying is that you can't level up dueling like a friend. You have to just do matchmaking in order to to level up to get better guns, which is annoying because I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it seems like <clears throat> it seems like they're going to be releasing a uh, a patch in February that'll have like bot matchmaking that you can fight. Uh, so I will probably pick it up more and unlock some stuff then. But it's definitely it was definitely a lot of fun. Neat. Yes. Well, I had one final thing, uh, and this was just yes. a question to you, Adrian. So sure. I saw I saw that you responded to my question or my not exactly plea, but just <laughs> I knew you were thinking of possibly dropping WandaVision after episode yes. three. And I said, before you do that, just watch episode four. And then you said, this was the correct decision. What exactly did you mean by that? Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess, it, I guess I, I could see how that w- would seem vague. <laughs> well, uh, it, it was vague because you did not respond in anything else regarding it. So it yeah, well, so, that. so, so the way this all went down. So, uh, I was out, skiing for the weekend uh and the episode came out and there was a big thread about it and like when i got it was one of those things as soon as i got back to cell service my phone lights up like a fucking christmas tree with all of the slack messages that pop in um and so i saw there was a big long episode four thread and then i saw you tag me uh and saying you know watch this before you give up or something along those lines so then today i got home from work uh, and I usually have a couple hours before the podcast. And Megan uh, went to the grocery store to get stuff for dinner. And, and I was like, all right, I'm going to play some like RimWorld or something. And I was like, wait, no, just in case they want to talk about this episode in banter. And because Zach said I should give this one a shot. And I had also seen over the weekend at work on like Sunday uh, and a little bit today, a couple like references, like real casual, nothing spoilery, but like the the one agent with the card trick and people are like, I love yeah. his Jimmy. Uh, Wu, yeah, yeah. Agent Wu. Like I love his progression, like his character <laughs> arc of just like <laughs> of Ant-Man doing all the magic and him not like being able to. And then he, he does the card real nice. Um, and does then just the a couple other things. Nice. Yeah. It does the card uh, real nice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any, the, but the, there was enough stuff that I was like, okay, this one, I feel like maybe kind of doesn't, stick so tightly to the uh sit old sitcom formula uh and so i was like yep i better watch that in case i want to talk about it i did and you were right what i what i meant by this was the correct decision was giving giving this watching this episode before making a decision about the series was the right decision 
uh, because I did. I loved this episode. I loved the way it tied things together. I loved getting to see uh, Agent Wu. I loved getting to see Kat Denning's character from the Thor movies. Darcy, yeah. Um, Darcy uh, show back up. I liked a lot more of the backstory that kind of hints at what is going on and gives it a time frame that I didn't like have before. I didn't know that this took place roughly around the time of things. And I'm, I'm going to be kind of vague because I don't want to spoil anything because it did only, you know, it'll be out like a week probably by the time anybody listens to this episode. But uh, just all of that contextual information uh, is really nice. And it feels like they're going to be breaking the show open more at this point. And I wonder if we'll see as much of the, you know, this is the sitcom of WandaVision versus this is the show of WandaVision. Um, and so, yeah, um, I'm okay. definitely, it renewed a lot of my interest in the show and what they might do. And this was more of what I had expected all along. I thought that it would be like this episode with more cuts to the sitcom side of thing, like more of a back and forth. I, I think, think it, I think it worked well doing it this way. Um, because I feel like some of it would not have played as well if it was happening, like you saw it happening concurrently from the beginning, from I the onset. So I just feel like they maybe, I feel like it would have been good. And I don't know what their plans are going forward. Like, I don't know if we're going to go back to have like three episodes of like sitcom WandaVision and then an episode of like context WandaVision right. and back and forth. Like, I don't know what their plan is, but it, it almost feels like, you know, like you'd I, mentioned, uh, go ahead. Yeah, you had mentioned we had kind of talked about uh, the that it was really good to l- release the two episodes uh, simultaneously so that you could see in that second one more of the cracks showing. I think I would almost say that maybe, had the, and granted, it's a really short season, so I see why they didn't for length reasons. But having the first three come out that are like that sitcom, 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 and then wait a week and then the first release would be the big like hey let's tie all this together and give a lot of context yeah yeah i could see that um i know like disney's never gonna just do the um the dump of a season no um uh so people could binge watch it but i yeah i could i could see especially with it being nine episodes instead of uh like a a lot of the feature ones are gonna be six to eight yeah um, it, maybe it would have been good to do three, but, uh, yeah. And I, I think in the future ones, it's going to be what you said previously of a little bit more of a mix between inside and, you know, inside and outside more or less. Uh, but because now, now they have expanded it and it, it would be weird for them to be like, all right, now let's go back to where we were and just sort of do that for that. That feels not dishonest, yeah. but it's, yeah. Uh, I think. I, I don't think you can go back to that, but I think it was it was a good place to start. I feel like I agree. Yeah. So, yeah. And the reason why I was like sort of uh, sort of hesitant on asking was like because I could have seen you just being like, yeah, no, I watched it and I could just tell this isn't what I wanted. <laughs> no, 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 that was very mu- it was very much more along the lines of yeah. what I had looked for That's what I heard. Uh, all okay. along. Yeah. Um, Speaking of TV shows that I also started since our last episode, I did finally start. I have not finished, but I started um, Queen's Gambit. And holy shit, that's really, really good, which is what everyone's been saying. Um, but, like, especially where everyone was like, we have a chess channel in the Slack now because everybody got, like, really obsessed with chess. And I was like, man, I'm just not interested in the chess aspect. It's a really good movie even if you don't give a shit about the chess aspect or good show, even if you don't give a shit about chess. So That's good to hear. Yeah, I I do want to watch it at some point. I just haven't. Yeah, I finally just like randomly started it one evening because I was like, "Eh, I'm not ready to go to bed, but I'm not ready to watch a full length movie. I guess I'll watch one episode of Queen's Gambit and then I watched two episodes uh, and then I watched another one on our camping trip. And then I have uh, three more. I think I think it's just six might be eight or nine. I don't know. But yeah, I dig it. Jeff, do you have any bantery things? I watched all of Shit's Creek. Uh, Shit's Creek is very good after the first episode or the first half of the first season. Um, Shit's Creek. It's is... amazing how many shows do that. Yeah, it's it, uh... it, with with comedies. It can take a couple episodes to really sort of figure out and, what and, works and what doesn't. And one of the hardest parts is those characters aren't very likable. 
or relatable yeah. because it's a comedy about very rich people losing all of their money and having to move to the middle of nowhere because <laughs> it's the it's the last asset they own. <laughs> um, but it very much gets much much better from there, uh, and was very good, which is why I watched all six seasons in like three weeks or a month or something like that. Where is it streaming? Netflix. Netflix. Okay, cool. Yep. It's very good. That's good. Yeah, it's definitely one that's been on my list, like so many things. Um, but it's good to hear, especially more after people. Yeah, it won all the Emmys. Yes. Um, uh, Dan Levy won f- like he won five by himself, I think. Yep. And he like won the all the like the big yes. five, which is yes. bonkers. unprecedented. I want to say because uh, they won best supporting and best actor for actress and actor yep and series well, and he also won like best writing and best directing yep. Yep. yeah yeah he just he fucking it, crushed it yeah so i would guess for him it would be best writing best directing best supporting actor best show i don't know what would the fifth one be i don't remember we may never know there's no way to know no no <laughs> if only there was some sort of font of information. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I can't think of one. Someone should make one. Do you have a typewriter over there, Adrian? That's very loud. <laughs> I don't know. I was just I was just mimicking the sound of your mechanical keyboard occasionally when you get all googly. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking um, about. They definitely don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I've watched a little bit of Lord of the Rings. Um. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos about Lord of the Rings recently. I found a good YouTube channel, Nerd of the Rings, that really goes in depth with like the history of Middle Earth and more like it book depth knowledge stuff. That's not just the movies, uh, okay. which is very interesting. Is like, there anything in particular that's brought this on? Uh, like no. Just... I think I just like Lord of the Rings. Um, okay. The 4K came out. Ah. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, but it's not the 4K extended. 4K, oh. 4K extended is going to come out mm. later this year. So, um, yeah, nothing. No, that's about it. I haven't done much that I can remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dyson Sphere Project, I guess. Um, it's a new Factorio esque game about building a Dyson Sphere. If you're not familiar with what a Dyson Sphere is, it's a shell that goes around a star to then draw the full energy from the star. And it's about you creating one of those basically from scratch. Uh, The scale isn't (laughs) like one to one, but it's like you start on a planet with just your pod and then you have to mine iron and copper and coal and stone and make generators that create mirrors that you launch into space with rail guns. Uh, I just hit that part, finally. Uh, and then you have to do that times a lot. <laughs> like, there's a whole, like, solar system scale. You're going to different planets in your solar system, kind of like uh, Astroneer, and gathering materials on other planets that aren't available on the planet you start at. But there's also other solar systems you can go to and get materials out of those to then send back to your main system to make more Dyson Sphere happen. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh... I saw somebody compare it to it's uh, Factorio meets uh, Satisfactory meets Total War. Uh, Maybe not Total War. It was something Supreme else Commander, that was like a, I think Supreme Commander. Yeah, less satisfactory, much less satisfactory, much more uh, Factorio. Oh yeah, yeah, I think they meant the vaguely like three D nature of it being the yeah, it's it's three D. It's like it's hey, 3D, but it definitely but satisfactory is three D, and this is three D. That means it's like satisfactory, right? Uh, <laughs> well, and it's logistics and well, so is factorial. Yeah. but it's more factorial yes. logistics than it is satisfactory logistics. It's 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 three D, but it the camera is uh, like third person isometric. Hey, no. you can move the camera around. It's oh, okay. It's whatever the hell you want it to be, really. Gotcha. I've um, heard some of the ratios for the bigger factory stuff gets kind of obnoxious in this one compared to like, and that's Factorio. why, yeah, and that's why you're going to other fucking planets, and then you have like carriers that go from each planet to other planets, and then interstellar, and yeah, it's it's a lot. Uh, I haven't gotten really down into that. I only have ten hours in it, um, but the the shit I've seen people already do with like hundreds of hours in it already are fucking insane. Uh, 
Did you get uh, Paul or Ant to play it? Ant, yeah. Ant is in it about six hours, uh, but that's that's about it so far. Gotcha. Ant is probably I'm... generally bad, better at it just because he, it, it, your your factorio knowledge flows a little better into the game than anything else. And then, I mean, and his factorio knowledge is Endless. extreme. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it has I joined him. Go ahead. It has all the numbers that you would want from Factorio, like input output, which Satisfactory doesn't really have. So it's a little easier to to go full full Factorio. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, I'm torn on that one because like I did not enjoy Factorio. Um but I really enjoy Satisfactory. And this one looks good. Um it, and I'm intrigued. It you need more but... like input output numbers of like I have to make sure I have enough ore coming out for all of my smelters to go into my assemblers and then you need research yeah. and your research is a lot more like factorio so i yeah. would say it's more like so factorio. i don't know i'm how, how good of an idea do you think i could get it get of it in like an hour and 45 a very good one okay so you have two hours for a refund right correct or is it just an hour okay maybe maybe it's, with megan it's five minutes Wednesday less than you think it is adrian <laughs> And that's always the fucking case. <laughs> God damn it. Um, okay. Yeah, I want to. I want to check it out. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, I need to. I need to get better at it, which means I need to play it more. But I keep running into. I mean, it's it just launched early access. It's already sold like four hundred thousand copies, and uh, they're patching it regularly so far. But it could use some more uh, quality of life updates, like. When you want to upgrade a speed of a belt, it just replaces it instead of you having to destroy it and then replace it, which is the current system. But <clears throat> that's that's in their next patch, so which should be out here fairly soon before the Chinese New Year, they say. That's it. Cool. Uh, well, um, no bloody minute still, right, Jeff? I haven't played Blood Bowl in too long. Yeah, uh, and you guys bailed on Kingdom Death, so no Kingdom Death hour this time. Only Forgotten Waters three and a half hours. Yeah. And so that lets us move over to some news and Kickstarters. Yes. News. Uh, ain't much news, but there is a Geekway happening this year. Yeah. So Geekway to the West put out a statement uh, today, actually, day of recording, uh, where they announced their dates for 2021. Uh, and they're weird. Uh, it is October 5th through the 7th. Uh, that's Tuesday, October 5th through Thursday, October 7th of 2021. Uh, and then just over a month later, Geekway Mini will be November 12th through November 14th, 2021. Um, currently, they are not changing anything for 2022. They're still anticipating back to May for regular Geekway and January for uh, regular Geekway Mini. Um and they go into more detail that basically uh, they were able to work out a deal with the St. Charles Convention Center, where Geekway has been for several years now, uh, where they were able to move the 2021 uh, with no penalties. Um, and so they were able to sign up for a 2021 uh, game. But then the contract uh, that they're under, like they had to have an event or there would be major financial penalties. Um, and... They didn't think they could, you know, if they had to do that, that would be the end of Geekway. They wouldn't have any money left. Um, and so they looked at all the dates that they had available, knowing that, like, they didn't think May would be, that'd be too soon. Um, that COVID would still be too big of a problem. And so they are choosing October and banking on the idea that by then, vaccines should be widely available uh, and hopefully this is under control. You know, we were talking about it in our Slack channel. Like Paul said, like, if COVID is still a very serious problem in October, we have so many bigger things to worry about than a convention being in trouble. <laughs> like, yeah. there's no reason that this should still be as big of a thing in October. Uh, barring major, you know, changes, you know, like a, a mutation that's not vaccine that, that, you know, bypasses the vaccines or something. Something fucking awful that will be bad um but yeah so 
um already in like the geekway slack channel there are people who are like ah oh, like i get it but that's a bummer because you know like that's my busy time of the year at my job and that is that's the middle of the week and like yeah you were saying like <laughs> gabf for you um then even like west said like he chooses gabf over over geekway whereas for me i'm like shit i only have to take tuesday off that's amazing <laughs> Like I can fly out Wednesday after work or Monday after work or drive out Monday after work and do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, drive back Friday, go to work Saturday. Fucking perfect. Like that's great for me. Um, and I fully anticipate on having a vaccine by October because like I should be in one of the higher groups and there's no fucking way I'm passing it up once I have a chance. So same, well, same here about, uh, passing it up. Uh, but I definitely, if I get the chance to do it and I feel like it will be safe enough, then I definitely would be doing it too. I, I would just yeah. probably just, I would probably just take the whole week off at that point, but uh. <laughs> yeah. And I still might end up taking more time off just to give yeah. myself more time to get there and back and not feel rushed. But, um, but yeah, so uh, we'll see. Um, you know, I like those are dates that I can get excited about. Like I was already kind of like thinking, about May and being like, man, I should, pro- I should hopefully have a vaccine by May. Like, yeah, maybe I'll go home and see my family for the first time in fucking well over a year and do geek way and play some board games and shit like that. Um, you know, and then this is just, this is just even better. Cause I get to wait even longer and feel even safer about things. So we'll see. Um, but I'm yeah, super they, they have a- like, <laughs> I can't take off like just a whole fucking week. <laughs> to go there and like the seventh is JBF day one, which not only is like beers, especially Denver beer, it's the most busiest time. Uh, yeah. Like, that leading up to it. If JBF happens and we're going to have major events, like I'm going to be helping set up those events. There's like zero way that I could ever like, Hey, fuck you. I'm going to St. Louis. <laughs> That we, I mean, you could try. You could try. <laughs> I could certainly what? try. Uh, uh, um, but even then, I'd yeah. probably rather just do GABF with Avery, which would be awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't blame you there. If I was still connected to the beer industry, I'd be more interested in GABF. Or like Wes, like he's done this for years with his like local friends, so like he has a little bit of a sentimental connection to GABF. But I've never done GABF. I don't work in the brewing industry, and I'd rather go play board games for three days. So I, I think. Uh, I think the I, I get I get it where sounds you're at, like yeah. the middle of the week thing is not great. <laughs> no, uh, and I imagine and like and they said that like they're they're straight up about it because they like, talk about like they looked at the dates and that was the only op- like there were no other weekends besides May, um, and so they picked like what they thought was one of the best blocks of dates because um, yeah they said they had three choices keep it where it was and risk people's health cancel completely and go out of business or move to the later date, even if it's the middle of the week. <laughs> and so that's what they're doing. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, I hope it, I hope they do well enough to pull through and be able to like come back swinging in 2022. Um, and I'm going to try and do my part to make that happen for them by going. Hopefully I can roll it over another year. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, well, I thought we got all ours refunded. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I think we got all. I th- we got. I think we got all our tickets refunded. Yeah, that's a double check. I'm pretty sure when I was checking finances recently, I saw that we had three big refunds from Geekway. Oh, okay. so and it won't matter. Um, yeah, they uh, beyond the dates, they have no other information. Uh, they said they have a lot of details to work out, like registration, what system they're using, because the the company they used to do their previous registrations went out of business. Um, will there be a vendor hall? What's the budget going to be? Uh, what kind of safety measures like masks or vaccination requirements? Like they don't know yet. Like that's all still up in the air and that will be coming. So we will see. But yeah. So that's it for news. Yep. Which gets us to Kickstarter. First up on kiss Kickstarter this week is... Uh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig Collector's Edition. Uh, yeah. Extremely well-funded. 938000 of its $10,000 goal. 
over 7,000 backers and just about two weeks left to pledge this one at its most popular pledge of $129. Yeah, so if you uh, wanted a ridiculously massive box of all things castles of Mad King Ludwig, you're in luck. Uh, so the so the box is, is fucking huge. Uh, but you get uh, six unique game trays uh new scoreboards, all new artwork, two new expansions, um one of which uh decrees you draft them at the beginning of the game uh and they give each player a unique ability um like ignoring room penalties or uh like getting uh discounted room purchases yeah, things like that extra points based on things you have or yeah um so that's decrees uh and then towers is the other new expansion they are stack of rooms um that's a new room uh in both shape and size and each room is a different type of room uh allowing you to get different completion rewards for each tower uh they also have a favor that only you can score at the end of the game and they come with a painted matching 3D tower that you put on top of it to hide what it is. So it's like secret information in your, your castles, uh, along with painted 3D towers. Um, they also uh, are including new scoreboards. Uh, so they're combination score market room boards. Uh, they have recessed areas for plastic trays, which hold rooms, favors, and cards. Uh, and they're double-sided, uh, with one side being long and narrow for, like, wide rectangular tables, while others uh, that are more square for, like, rounded or square tables to adjust how they take up space on the board, I guess? Um, yeah, because the first have... one was a, was a real hog. A light, uh, for <laughs> for table space, yeah, it was, yeah. and it was awkwardly like uh, triangular too, from what I remember. Yeah, um, like zigzag all. Yeah, it was yeah. It, not great. Um, so yeah, so they got these new ones that uh that are nice, and now instead of that like weird track, uh, you're a you have swan shaped player markers that are going basically around like a beautiful water garden thing, uh, for the castles. Um, that Royal level that Jeff was talking about, the $130 one, um, the cardboard components are replaced with, uh, metal coins, weighted plastic poker chips for favors, uh, and glassy smooth swan tokens for scoring. Um, if you go all the way up to the Colossal, the 170, um, then, uh, you get a box of colossal rooms, secret passages, foyers, tower rooms, and more game tray organizers uh, with an even bigger recessed scoreboard uh, thing. So you can go for just giant castles of Mad King Ludwig if that's what, what you're into. Yeah, uh, which I definitely... like. I Like I said, that game already takes up a lot of space. I can't imagine having pieces that are like twice as big, at least. And trying to continue with that, yeah. But I'm glad that they 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 separated that into its own pledge, um, uh-huh. so you don't have to worry about it if you don't want it. And yeah. I like that the the um the most popular one, the royal one, is only um, material upgrades, component upgrades. It's not like you're not they didn't hide like one of the uh, new expansions behind it, right? So yes. if you want, you can just spend a hundred bucks to get base game and then all the expansions. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just a new one. Um, I remember one of the reasons I ga- gave my copy away was just the lack of good organization. And then, like I said, and it was very awkward to try and do stuff. Um, and it seems like this is, this would definitely help in that regard. I guess I didn't realize you'd gotten rid of your copy, Zach. I did. Yes. And also, also it was, a it's a, it's a, a game where you it was a hard game to get out um yeah partially because of that i didn't want to have to deal with setting it up and bring it you know and tearing it down and uh, were moats from an old expansion it was the first ex- the secret expansion 
added moats and swans, from ah. what I remember. So, because yeah, like I was looking at these moat things and I'd never seen that before, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool too. Yep. No, the moats moats were cool on it. I like them because they, you know, they gave you a border, but they gave you something good. So it was, uh, you know, that pick and mm-hmm. choose. Uh, yeah. No, this is definitely just like the suburbia one before it. I had gotten rid of that one for similar ish reasons and i was like oh maybe it's something i would consider going back for uh i'm not sure i mean it's december so you know everything will be back to normal by then right uh (laughs) totally (laughs) totally i mean Uh, if we're going to conventions in october (laughs) right um so i don't know i still i'm still torn on this one right now yeah, same. Uh, for me, it's mostly the price tag. Um, I really like Mad King Ludwig, uh, but I don't know if I want to spend 100 bucks on it. I'm trying to get back on top of my finances after I blew a ton of money on snowboard stuff. So uh, Just get rid of your snowboard stuff, and then you'd have money again. Come on, man. Nope. No. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> so I'd sooner sell a whole bunch of my board games, which I'm already thinking about doing as well. I know, right? And that's also part of it, too, is just like I ended up getting rid of that. And so, obviously, like, I feel like the game, I, I didn't, like, I still, I still remember liking it, but uh, it's still, I didn't like it enough to keep it despite all that other stuff. And so, yeah. I don't want to have to get it and be like, ah, I remember, like, you know, remember, like, oh, yeah, I remember this. And then just sort of, it just going onto the the um, shelf again. So. Yeah. That's why I'm disappointed to hear you got rid of it, because it was nice. That was one that was really nice at being like, oh, Zach's got that one. <laughs> like when I feel when I feel in the mood, I can get a hold of Zach and like play his or borrow his. Yeah. And so yeah, I want to say I got um, rid of it one uh, one of our uh, uh, whatever it was called raffle anniversary. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah. So that's Castles of Mad King Ludwig Collector's Edition. Jeff, have you played it at all? Just curious. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think at an anniversary or well, when Barrel Brewing existed, uh, at least. Uh, <laughs> oh, I missed them. Um. Yeah. Next up on Kickstarter, we have Reload. Totally not Fortnite. Um, <laughs> just funded forty-two thousand of its a twenty thousand dollar goal. Six hundred twenty-five backers. About two weeks left to go, and you can pledge it at its most popular pledge level of fifty-nine dollars. Yeah. So, uh, Reload is a battle royale game for two to four players coming from Colossal Games, uh, who did like Western Legends and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they like said two to four players, 60 minute battle royale game. Um, you can get the base game for 30 bucks. Uh, this Kickstarter is another one of the ones that frustrate me because they don't tell you how to play the fucking game. Anywhere in the fucking Kickstarter, which drives me nuts. Um, their gameplay section is like, unique cast of characters, fame is the name of the game, and loot for survival. And it's like, none of that tells me how to play. Uh, there's a good video on here uh, that does a decent job of explaining it. Uh, essentially, the way the game plays is you drop into this giant hex board, uh, just like a battle royale game, you parachute in, Um and then you are fighting in the arena. And so you have uh, your character board has different actions like move, set a trap, throw up a barricade, uh, disable trap, heal, and attack are, I think, the, what the six main actions are. And you have five dice, and different actions require different die faces. You can set your die to whatever you want and put it on whatever action you want. So if you want to move, for instance, the move is the same on everybody's board. It's a four for your first move, a three for your second move, and a two for your third move. So if you want to race across the board, you can do three moves, and you set one of your die to a four, put it on the four, three on a three, two on a two, so on and so forth. Uh, And you do all your other actions. Where that gets interesting is if there's a fight, if somebody attacks you, uh... Any dice that you've placed for your actions move over to this little sidetrack and go in uh, highest to lowest uh, order. Any ones you didn't use, you roll them at this point and then add them into that mixture. And then you compare the two, and your opponent does this as well, and you compare risk style the die, like one to one across the top. So the like skulls are the lowest value, but they do just instant damage. Um, and then beyond that, if like 
you have a 5-5 five, five, and a 1, and your opponent has a 6-4-3, three. their 3 beats your 1, uh, their, I don't I already forgot what numbers I said, uh, but so you just go straight across each die. So if your top die is a six and theirs is a five, you beat their five, you do a damage. If your second is a four and theirs is a five, their five beats your four, they do a damage to you. And you go back and forth like that. Um, you can't actually die in the game if you take four damage. Uh, each damage that you take, you put a die up in your little damage tracker. You can use your heal action to heal some. Um, but if you take four damage, you're forced to reload name of the game um in which case you get all of your die back you lose all of your equipment you get a new piece of starting equipment and you drop somewhere new onto the board um the way you win the game uh is by accumulating fame uh which are you have a fame track and this is one of the other things i think is actually kind of a cool mechanic so there's no points for anything you don't get like one point for this two points for this three points to this and it's a race to 20 points or whatever you have your board, uh, you have your little fame track that's like a recessed cardboard track and different things that you do, you earn these little like arrow tokens that you put into that track and whoever fills their track first wins. So you could win by running around and setting a bunch of traps. Like that's one of the smallest, thinnest slivers. You would have to do it a lot. Uh, whereas like forcing someone to reload, doing that killing blow is the biggest chunk. So if you run around and just snipe kills, you could fill it up maybe a little bit faster. Um, there's a little bit of a mechanic where uh, there's a, an achievement board, uh, which is basically like in the lore of the game. It's what people are most excited about at the time, uh, which just gives you bonus pieces to put in that track when you achieve certain score combinations. Like they might want to see uh, like an attack and then a claim a flag, and then a set a trap. And if you have that three combination in the right order on your score track, you get an extra little achievement bonus that, that helps you fill up your track faster. Um, that's the base game. Uh, you run around doing a whole lot of that. So um, I saw the bunch of dice, and I thought it was a dice checker, and it's not, which is nice. Um, the actions, like things like attacking, use smaller numbers. So like the the better better the action is the, the smaller the number it forces you to use which then makes you weaker if you get attacked so you kind of have to balance like you know doing good actions and making yourself weak versus doing weaker actions but making you strong to attack um there's additional rules for different characters having special abilities and things that you can use um some of the higher pledge level uh higher pledge levels include things like the fan favorite $39 pledge has capture the flag mode um, and things like that, that you can play a little bit different in your battle Royale. Um, so yeah, that's uh that's reload. I'm still really upset that I had to like halfway read the rule book and watch a video and do all of that to figure out how to play the game. Cause that's pretty straightforward. I feel like they could have just made a little section to throw in the, the Kickstarter there. Um, but we all know my feelings about that because I rant about it far too often. They do have a little cool thing where um, you can actually sign up for a demo on Tabletopia with a Colossal Games ambassador. And they have like a little scheduler on the Kickstarter page uh, where you can actually like schedule to actually play a game with someone to demo it online, which is something I haven't seen before. So. Yeah, that is actually cool. Um, it's also like if you do that, uh, after they teach you the game, they'll give you a link to where you can host your own games of it on Tabletopia so that you can share and play uh, whenever you want. Yeah, that's so, neat. Which is clearly like kind of a viral marketing idea, but I I like it. So That's Reload. Yeah, so if you were looking for a Battle Royale board game, here it is. Next up on Kickstarter... We have Radlands, a uh, very well-funded $260,000 of its $19,000 goal, just about 5,000 backers, and just about a week left to pledge this one, which you can at its only pledge level of $40. Yeah, so uh, Radlands is the latest from Roxley Games, uh, and this one 
has a how to play at the <laughs> very fucking front of the Kickstarter. Thank you, Roxley, for doing this right. One, you make my life easier as a podcaster. And two, this is how I prefer to evaluate a Kickstarter before I invest a bunch of time. I don't want to have to dig around to figure out how to play. just want to tell, tell me, and then I can decide if I'm interested and want to go more. Anyhow, the way Radlands plays. So this is a two-player game where, uh, like a card dueling kind of battle game. Uh, it was designed by former Magic the Gathering uh, developer Daniel Pichnik. Pichnik? Don't really know how to pronounce it. Uh, and so it is a dueling card game. And essentially the way the game plays at the start, uh, you get a hand of six camps. You pick three of them. They have different effects uh, and they go onto your tableau. Then you begin to deploy people uh, in front of your camps to protect them. You can do up to two people deep. So eventually you could have like a three by three grid uh, where your back three is your camps and then your middle and front row are people. Uh, there's essentially two types of people. There's like uh, actual characters with actual abilities uh, that are named and have cool art or there's punks, uh, which is like the backs of some of these cards, I believe. Yeah, it's the back of the card. Uh, and punks are just a super squishy generic character that can just like take a hit. Uh, and then you activate abilities. Uh, so you use your your buildings produce a certain amount of water, uh, and then you use that water to activate abilities, um, which can be all kinds of different things. Um, their little gifts move too fast for me to read them as I'm going through this. Uh, and ultimately, the goal of the game is to destroy all three of your opponent's camps. Uh, and whoever does that first is the winner and is declared the Alpha Tribe. Um, so pretty straightforward uh, for the actual gameplay. Um, they have, like, as you dive deeper down into the Kickstarter, they show, like, the 24 base camps. Uh, they give you examples of uh, nine of the 24. Uh, so you can see, like, the card layouts, the art style, and then, like, what they do. So, like, the parachute base uh, produces zero water. Uh, but you play a person and use their ability, uh, you have to pay for it, then damage them. So it lets you, like, throw somebody out and immediately use them, but then they take a damage. Uh, which I didn't really go into before, so, like, full characters that have abilities and stuff, you uh, turn the card sideways. Uh, there might be a really nice name for that that's trademarked. Uh, but you turn the card sideways to show it's damaged. Punks, they just, they die with one hit. Uh, and same thing, camps can get damaged, so they turn sideways. If anything sideways and gets another damage, it goes away. Um, you know, so, um, yeah, they have different different abilities and things on the camp cards. Uh, the camp cards you choose also will determine uh, what your hand size is uh, for the game. So, like, you could have five or three, depending on what camps you choose uh, for your hand size. Um, yeah. Uh, people have similar abilities, like this cult leader they show here, who looks suspiciously like um, uh, Immortan Joe from uh, Fury Road. Uh, he produces zero water, uh, but you can uh, destroy one of your people and then do a damage to somebody. So you're just sacrificing your people to do more damage. Um, you know, the pyromaniac you know, costs of water to activate his ability, uh, and he does damage to an unprotected camp. Basic stuff like that. Um, there are event cards as well uh, that have, like, a timer on them. Some, so some of them are, like, instant events, but other ones you put out there, and then it takes a couple turns for them to activate so your opponent can kind of prepare for it. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the basic core stuff of the game. Uh, they're also advertising these cards are their uh, synth card stock. Uh, which is a Roxley thing where they've been working for a long time to develop uh, PVC-based cardstock that can be bent end-to-end uh, -end without creasing and is water and spill-proof. Um, so That's fancy. They, yeah, so they say they play and slide around just like normal cards, but always go back to the original shape, and that, uh, yeah, they're, like, spill and waterproof. The little gif, like, the dude bends the shit out of the card, and it does look like it pretty much goes back to just perfectly normal um yeah that seems super cool yeah 
it's coming with some other like gnarly components. The water tokens are the like big thick backgammon style discs, um, with like notches and stuff in them. Recessed uh, water yeah. tracking. Yeah. Uh, you can add on uh the hazmat upgrade, which is two hazmat play mats that come in a special box that holds everything. Uh, that looks really cool. The art style on this is definitely pretty awesome. Um, this game's got style. It definitely does. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's this tw- is it's this a twenty dollar like upgrade for the two uh play mats. neoprene play mats. Yeah, which is cool with stitched edging. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no stretch goals because they're like, nah, they're all unlocked. Everything you get is yep. what you get. Yeah. Um it I like I like this Kickstarter. This is how I would like Kickstarters to be. I like the no frills of like the stretch goals and shit. I like the layout. I really like that like there's a little bit of story and then it jumps like just immediately into how to play. And it gives you a really quick basic overview of the game. So you could be like, yes, that sounds interesting. Let me look at more. Or no, that's not for me. Thanks for not wasting my time. Uh, cough, cough, fucking whatever the game we just covered that I already forgot reload. about. <laughs> yeah, reload. I knew it started with an R. That was. Um, but it's Fortnite. Yeah. So yeah, that's Radlands. Um. Cool. I'm really interested in some of the stuff like the cardstock, uh, and like if that's actually as good as it sounds. Um, oh, man, yeah, I kind of like it. I want. I wonder if I'd actually like the gameplay. I like everything about the Kickstarter. It's really well laid out. I like the art. I like all that. I don't know if that's a game I would actually want to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that expensive. True. 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 And that's Redlands, and we're done. Yep. So. Uh, Radlands by Roxy Games to wrap up the Kickstarters. Uh, that would normally move us over to listener feedback, but we don't have any. Y'all are slacking. We take two weeks off and you give us a bunch of shit on Twitter and uh, Slack, but don't actually send us any, any listener feedback. I see how it is. <laughs> uh, if you want to send us listener feedback, there is a bunch of different ways to do that. You can send us emails. Emails at milehighgameguys.com. You can find us over on uh, Twitter, where I tweet under at MHGameGuys. I am Zach underscore MHGG. I am Jeff underscore MHGG. Uh, we have our Instagram account at MHGameGuys, uh, which maybe someday Jeff will paint minis on again or I'm something. Strip first. We're not going down that path again. <laughs> Covered that last week. Um, <laughs> we have our Facebook, uh, page, I just gotta Facebook. find a tub com. that I need to strip in. Oh, that's God. That's safe to strip. Oh, God. Strip safe stub- tubs. Yep. Haunting. Uh, we have our Facebook page, facebook.com slash mhgameguys. Our, uh, website, milehighgameguys.com is still up and running. We are working with one of Jeff's friends, though, to get new website stuff and new podcast hosting. Uh, we're trying to re- redo things here and we're excited about it um but over on that website you can still find on some of the old show notes links to things like our slack channel our board game geek guild guild number 2731 or our twitch channel twitch.tv slash mh game guys uh you can also find all of those links and new show notes for the latest episodes over on punchboardmedia.com uh, we are still very proud members of Punchboard Media. Uh, and while you're over there, you can check out all of the other awesome creators in the Punchboard Media group. So uh, highly recommend that you do that. Uh, I think that's pretty much all of the different ways to get a hold of us. Uh, I can't think of any others off the top of my head. Uh, as always, we would like to thank our sponsors, Gray Fox Games, for continuing to sponsor the show. Uh, you can jump over to their website, grayfoxgames.com, where you can put in uh, late backing for Campaign Trail and the Green Party expansion, which was their latest Kickstarter. You can pre-order some of their other older Kickstarters, like For Science, or even uh, put in a pre-order for the all-in Tsukiyumi with fancy minis and shit for $325. Oh, is that all? Just all. <laughs> just, that's all. You get a ton of stuff. That's a huge box. We we uh, did 
Did was that one we actually streamed or did we just play and review it? Can't remember. But it was a lot of stuff even when it was the first edition with standees and now it's got a bunch of fucking minis and stuff. Um but yeah, you can also put in pre-orders for things like Tortuga 2199, which is another one of their more recent kickstarters after the Empire. Uh you can put in uh pre-orders for and then in a little less than a month, there will be a new Kickstarter coming from Gray Fox Games that we will be talking about at a later time. Jeff, do you have a prepared statement for us? Of course. Gray Fox Games. Quality games cleverly crafted. Also, the muzzle velocity of a bullet fired from a revolver is slower than one fired by an automatic. The slower a gun's muzzle velocity, the more damage it does, because the bullet will tend to lodge in the body instead of going right through. Those kinds of wounds take a long time to heal. Sometimes they never do. I think that's part of the reason he likes that gun. He's a real sick puppy, that ocelot. I don't think any of that is true, but... <laughs> I, I mean, there's some truth to it. Some. <laughs> um, But yeah, Revolver Ocelot, one sick puppy. Uh, right on. Uh, that pretty much wraps everything up, except for we need to throw a shout out. To our friend Ryan S., who has become a new patron over on our website, or on our Patreon, patreon.com slash milehighgameguys, uh, where he pledged $3.03, and uh, which is doing pulling down some double duty. Uh, so that is like a buck and a penny for each of us, so it avoids like one buck shamings. <laughs> uh, it also is 303, which is one of the main area codes for the Denver area, uh, for like phone numbers and stuff. So nice. Good on you, Ryan. You're <laughs> a pal. We appreciate it. Um, so yeah, that's now everything and we can wrap up this show. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, as always, I have been your host, Adrian. I am still Zach and I'm creaky Jeff. Mm, bye. 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 Punch board media, where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com.